you will see there's names that you could do very, very well. Like for example, Tesla, all you need is Tesla. If Tesla confirms this $15, $20 worth of upside. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, happy Monday, everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is uh, doing okay. So quite a rally today. Uh, over the weekend, uh, big, well, big stimu stimulant came in, came out. Question was, how is the market gonna respond? Uh, futures open up, uh, Sunday night futures cash market opened up. Uh, futures went up about 200 points or so. Uh, and the question was, what was gonna happen next? And if you look at all the data for the last several weeks, you know, well, you know, uh, information is all out there for everybody to, uh, to kind of understand. You had the whole weekend to kind of digest of what your game plan was going to be like coming Monday. And initially, of, of course, I was still sell bias uh, going into uh, the weekend, especially after that Friday's uh, really exceptional day a lot of very aggressive polls, but once you have st uh, stimulant on the table and you have concrete news that, hey, the government is coming out, they're gonna help everybody out, um, the money is is on the table. Now the question was, how is the market going to respond? How is the market going to um, kind of embrace the news that a lot of people are going to get helped out? And the most amazing part was the same game plan that I had on Thursday going to Friday's session was exactly the same game plan I had uh, you know, from Friday's session coming in today. I wanted to see the bulls prove me wrong. And the, the one thing that I keep on reiterating over and over again, and I said this uh, numerous times over the weekend, as long as you know your levels, right? You know where the sell bias is gonna come in, where more sellers are gonna come in, and if you know where the more buyers are gonna come in, that's when you're safe. When you, when you are stuck and painted into your bias, nothing good ever happens. You're, 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 you're sitting there uh, like a deer in headlights, you're hoping uh, you know, a, a night's gonna come a shining armor is gonna come and, and help you out. It doesn't work that way. And what we saw today was a perfect case of two things happen. Number one, the market really embraced the stimulus news. That was one. Number two, we, we talked about on the video, uh, the futures markets dictated higher prices this morning, and they started confirming the two levels we talked about on the weekend video, that 319 level. It was the double cross between the five-day moving average and the 50-day, which was very, very important. We highlighted the the bottom of this channel here over the weekend as well, 311 to the downside, 39 to the upside. So there wasn't any surprise. There, there, it, there shouldn't have been, especially if you did your homework uh, over this weekend and, and did a macro, just a macro back test of the Russell, the S&P, the Qs, and the S&P 500, you were prepared for today's trading session. Maybe uh, if you came in with an inventory, a whole different story, but the point is, like for me, for example, I come in flat, um, you know, majority of the times, it's very, very easy for me to switch bias only when technicals turn around. And the one thing that I, I will say about today's session is um, very, very impressive. Number one, and I kind of want to show you guys, uh, this was from this morning, okay? These are the levels we put on, uh, macro levels from any closing basis, 319, 320, bullish, obviously. We had a huge run today in 311 bearish, and we kind of played the market out uh, on that point of view. Um, what, I, what I didn't like about today's session, and when you go through your homework today, you'll kind of see it. With, with a 600 point rally in the Dow and a 300, almost 400 point rally uh, in, the, in, the, in the NASDAQ, the NDX, you would have thought there was gonna be a lot of big value today. And the one thing that we did to see, although there was some things, and again, I traded some NVIDIA to the downside that confirmed um, I traded a couple of smaller cap names, but if you look at today's action, this was one big dead cap bounce, okay? It was literally a dead cap bounce, reclaiming the 60 day, uh, the 50 day moving average on the Qs. And if you look at a lot of stocks, they were really in middle of the channel, so much of the day. And if you kind of kind of you know look at where we are right now, you'll see why, right? And this is kind of exactly where we came back from for the last several times it rallied and got rejected. If you can see here, it rallied here and then got rejected, rallied here, got rejected, and it rallied back to this level. So on the surface, when you look at today's close, you turn around and say, wow, this is great, right? The bulls reclaimed uh, the 50-day moving average all is good in the world, right? Death to the bears, blah, 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 right? 
Unfortunately, when you look at charts tonight, you're going to see a little bit different picture. You're going to see a lot of names that are still stuck in channels. Although there's some names that look really good for tomorrow, you know, like a Lamb Research is very, very close to really busting out. Uh, even Tesla. Okay, I don't think Tesla's out of the woods by no stretch of the imagination, but had a pretty good run today. It reclaimed the five-day moving average, and if it starts confirming today's price action, maybe we could get a move tomorrow for 735, 740. Is it going to be a move back to the all-time highs? No, but you have to have uh, baby steps when you're trading micro channels in a very, very big macro market. And we did see today uh, some 750 weeklies, some 810 weeklies. So there's definitely buyers and obviously the stock closed uh, at the highs. Uh, after the close, NEO came out with earnings. Uh, nothing great, nothing even, even close to you know, what you expect. Uh, wider than expected loss. Uh, you know, Tesla's actually holding up here uh, fairly well after the close, pretty much at the closing price. Is this going to take effect into Tesla and Tesla tomorrow? Probably not. So I, I do like Tesla tomorrow. I would. The only way I would obviously start buying this thing if it starts confirming this channel here, and if it does and it starts stretching, you can get a move to 735. So you have the Lamb researches tomorrow. Uh, you have the Teslas for tomorrow. Uh, even Netflix. And again, maybe Netflix is maybe a day or two away, but at least you can see the channel developing here. But again, when you look at a lot of other names and you expect, well, tomorrow if they confirm they're gonna go, not necessarily. If you look at Facebook, it's going right into supply. If you go on it, if you look at Amazon, you know, Amazon's not really going into supply, but you only got like a $10 channel before you challenge with more trees in the forest. When you look at Apple as well, right? You had this move here. And again, yeah, maybe a, maybe a, maybe a smaller move coming up. Can it, you know, can it confirm and trade right back to the supply, it could, but you're not getting that big potential, macro potential move that we're looking for on reversal. I, I think the best case scenario for the bulls tomorrow, and, and we wanna talk from the bullish case, the best case scenario for the bulls is number one, they have a digestion day. And sometimes distribution, don't confuse distribution from digestion. Distribution is what we saw two weeks ago, the bulls and the bears are fighting over control. You know, dice, you know, digestion day is, you know, we just really engulfed the last two days of selling. So if we can not give up those gains, not give up these really, really aggressive gains that we saw tomorrow, maybe you won't have this majestic follow through tomorrow, but maybe if you, you know, if we are really diligent about every individual setup, despite the index is resting, and again, tomorrow will be a perfect, perfect rest day. If they could just do their job tomorrow and just reclaim 325 on a close, you're not going to probably see it in a really aggressive um, measure potential type of day, but baby steps. Because again, we have to start working from 25 to 28 for the stocks to really stretch and really get loose. The NASDAQ 100, the QQQ is going to have to really reclaim 328. And then you have this really, really big measured potential trade on the table. Until that happens, will it shock me if we gap up tomorrow and get stuffed into supply? No, but it shouldn't shock anybody because supply is right over here. It's looking at us right in the face. So tomorrow, be a little more diligent. It's going to be very uh, stock specific. A lot of you guys are going to run into a lot of names. That you're going to, they're going to start moving up in the morning. They look really good. And then you're going to say to yourself, well, what, what happened? Why did this stock fail? Yeah, I mean, they, they, they're trade, a lot of them are going to trade uh, into supply. So be very, very careful of the names uh, that you do uh, choose for tomorrow. So today, it wasn't one of these great, magnificent days. Again, if you are keeping score of your own performance based on the indexes, you're, you're going to be very, very disappointed. Because I know a lot of people, especially new traders, they see the market of four, five, six, seven hundred points. They lose their mind. They start chasing prices into really, really bad levels. And they don't realize that the scoreboard is really creating tremendous amount of FOMO. And they, when they look at their performance for the day, they're going to turn around and say, wow, why the hell did I not make money today? The market was up 700 points. Why did my stocks fail? Again, technical analysis, stocks going into supply. And there's a difference between you buying a channel, for example, like a, you know, not to be, beat a dead horse, but when you look, for example, like a LRCX, at least you could see here, right? It starts, 
uh, confirming this channel here, you have 15, 20 points of upside versus like a square, right? Just versus like a square, for example, if it starts confirming this channel here, maybe you have a dollar and a half, uh, $2. So not every single stock is going to be created the same tomorrow. Not every single channel is going to be meant for expansion tomorrow. I think if you do your diligence today and really get ready for tomorrow's trading day, you will see there's names that you could do very, very well. Like for example, Tesla, all you need is Tesla. If Tesla confirms this $15, $20 worth of upside tomorrow, obviously that is my focal point. If it doesn't confirm and starts trading back into the channel, well, yes, we're probably gonna be looking at a very, very quote unquote choppy day because again, we had such a huge run today. There's a lot of channels that are still very, very um, condensed, right? They're still very uh, aggressively tight and those channels need to be confirmed. Maybe that happens tomorrow, maybe it happens two days from now, but the last thing you wanna do going into tomorrow's session is gung-ho blazing saying, bears never learn, let's buy everything at any price. That's when you get really caught. This is when emotional buyers, this is a perfect example of emotional buyers going into technical sellers, into supply, and then sitting there you know, 45 minutes later saying, what the hell just happened? How come my stock failed? I'm telling you, it's going to fail because most of these stocks are very, very close into supply and they're going to mirror uh, the QQQ. So be very, very, you know, be, be very aware of these levels here. This whole level here needs to confirm and the Qs really have to close baby steps over 25 just to get going. So be very wary of choosing your uh, stocks to trade for tomorrow's session. Like I said, uh, today's session just wasn't one of those gangbuster uh, sessions. Uh, there wasn't 600 pivots that everything went nuts, but the ones that did go, um, you know, did, did okay. Uh, the one thing, guys, I apologize for all you guys who are on the Twitter feed. Our first uh, pivot of the day, I forgot to put on the pivot feed. It was uh, NVIDIA, okay? It was NVIDIA. Uh, NVIDIA was very, very weak this morning. I was waiting for a flush on a lot of things. Uh, so here's the NVIDIA pivot. And again, I apologize for all you guys. Uh, I did not put it into the Twitter feed, but here's my first trade of the day here. Uh, it started breaking down below this 540 level, really, you know, really fast moving to the 542s before obviously recovering. Um, you know, it, it wasn't supposed to be one of these stocks that completely collapsed because the market was up five, 600 points. But the point is a little bit of cash flow uh, is fine. There's nothing absolutely wrong with that as well. Uh, again, here's the levels for all you guys who traded the ETFs on the macro side, really, really nice move uh, off the 319, 320 level on the Qs. Uh, you know, OCG, I never got the 12. Uh, Netflix obviously never got down to the 535 level for a flush. Uh, IBM never got to the, you know, never got to the 118 level for a flush. Uh, CRM, you know, nice little move down for all you guys who did take it. Not a big move down, but the ones that were weak uh, continued to stay weak. So here is the 316 breakdown. Uh, only one down a dollar into the lower linear regression line. So, uh, you know, nice little move there, but nothing, again, nothing really big because the market is very, very strong. Uh, Tesla, initially I was watching to the downside today, obviously got nowhere close to the downside. Uh, reverse course, now I'm watching it back to the upside. And again, this is, you know, this was my, um, you know, this was my uh, you know, message, you know, not only on the weekend video, but uh, this morning as well at Morning Strategy on the Twitter feed. Stay patient this morning. I go, I'm, I'm gonna give it uh, every opportunity for the bulls to kind of give up. You know, we'll reevaluate after the first two candles of the day. Uh, it's not a race. I'll start putting these pivots as we go along and the market definitely reverse. Remember, you don't need to be right, okay? You don't need to be right. You don't need to be popular. You have to be fiscally responsible and embrace what the market is telling you and not what you think is going to happen. If, if I sat there every single day anticipated trades you get murdered you get, you get absolutely destroyed and it's the fastest way to completely exit yourself prematurely out of this business uh very very quickly so uh boeing was definitely the biggest move of the day uh 221 needs to build here was boeing right so here's that 221 candle uh it took out 221 excuse me it took out this uh 221 candle went all the way up to 227 here's a 60 minute view right it took out this whole 221 level and went all the way to 227. Congratulations for all you guys uh, who caught that as well. Uh, Airbnb obviously got nowhere near uh, the 92 level. Uh, Facebook got nowhere near uh, the 254 level to the downside. Boeing again, take on the way up. Uh, and there was a small trade here, nothing big. AMC has been rejected uh, several times on the 920 supply, needs to reclaim. Uh, ironically, $15 call buyers came in, God knows why. Uh, not, again, not a big move on AMC. You know, ran up about 30 cents. 
here's the 920 level, you know, nice move into supply, again, nothing, nothing to even talk about there. Uh, Lumina never got to 13, and as, I, as again, as I joked around, I go, listen, take a long way up, I go, this isn't, you know, this isn't Apple, this is uh, uh, AMC, so that's it, I mean, that's it. So I, I think a lot of times, uh, when you get a reversal day, people start getting really, really, uh, you know, very happy feet, right? Very happy feet, very, um, you know, very ego driven. Ha ha, bears never learn. And then they realize that, you know, bears do learn. That's the whole point. When you are trading a market, whether it's good, bad or indifferent, there is viable, there's a viable degree of a goal line for both bulls and bears. And if you are one way biased, and if you believe that it's only one way to make money, you're going to be very, very saddened to find out when the the tide does turn, whether you're a bull or a bear, you better try to, you know, you better find a way to put stakes in the freezer because you're going to be very, very disappointed if you are only one way biased. Guys, have a great day, everybody. Let's see what happens tomorrow, right? Let's see what happens. I got some shorts uh, that I like. I have some longs that I like. Again, I'm not expecting a huge, huge deal, but again, you never know what this glorious market could give you. Guys, have a great night, everybody. God bless. Happy Monday, and I'll see you guys tomorrow.